author is funded by the Pacific Northwest Writers Association, supporting writers from pen to publication since 1955. To learn more about the PNWA and their yearly conference, please go to pnwa.org. Hi, this is Bill Kanauer for Author Magazine, and we're here at Third Place Books in Lake Forest Park with Sherry Priest, author of Ganymede. Welcome to Author. Thank you very much for having me. Sherry, your first book was uh, Four and Twenty Blackbirds, and that was published in 2005, but I assume you did not just begin writing in 2002. Oh, no. No, no, no. Um, How did you come to this? I don't know. I, it, I always told stories, and, and I'm not really any good at anything else, so it was really write books or marry well, and, <laughs> and those were my career options. And when you say you told stories, I grew up in a family of storytellers. We'd sat mm -hmm. around and we told each other stories, and that was in a way, I think, how I learned to write it first. Did you mean actually telling people oh, yeah. stories, or were you writing, always writing them down? I uh, always wrote them down, but always told them. A uh, family of preachers and teachers, so there was a, a great tradition of this. But um, I think I did maybe uh, maybe seven or eight before 4 and 20 got picked up. All right, so you wrote seven or eight, and you were trying to find agents and publishers and mm -hmm. the whole. So how was, how was that time for you? Was that It was high difficult? school. It was high school. <laughs> it was high school and it was difficult. When, when people will occasionally pull the, how did you get published? Because, you know, that's right. my template. No, not my, <laughs> you're not going to get published like I got published unless you, you kill an editor and that would be bad. Right. Uh, literally what happened was I had sent a package proposal, you know, a sample content and the pitch to Tor. Um, got my form rejection back, pick up the pieces of your shattered life and move on. Right. No big deal. Um, Fully two years later, I get an email out of the blue from a woman with a dot tour email address. I thought, oh my goodness. Her name is Liz Gorinsky. She's an editorial assistant who was cleaning out the office of someone who had died, found my proposal in a box under a desk, and can't throw anything away without reading it first. Oh my God. I, I know the odds, it's just astronomical. <laughs> That's fantastic. It was crazy. And if you wrote it, you would right. be, it would, it would not, no one would believe no me. One would believe no it. one would believe me. <laughs> and, and the thing was, I had moved since I had, so none of my contact information was current except for the email address. Wow. And the subject line was something to the effect of, I hope to God you were still checking this email address because she'd already sent me a letter and it had come back. This was long enough ago that we were still doing it, you know, right. through, through letters. And, uh. All right. Now, you said you came from a, a family of preachers and teachers. Mm -hmm. uh, you said the only thing you ever wanted to do is write. Yep. But did they say, great? Or did they say, no, <laughs> this is a horrible idea. You'll never make a li What was their response to that? Uh, it, it, <clears throat> excuse me. It depends on which end of my family you're talking about. My parents divorced when I was fairly small. And, uh, my, was one a preacher and one a teacher? No, no. The mom, my mom's family, they're uh, uh, right-wing fundies. Okay. Uh, Jesus is coming back any minute, and we all must be prepared and... Um, you know, and, and your father's not going to heaven because he doesn't love Jesus and your pets oh, can't come and, okay, and all, all right. your friends I don't like, they're not coming either. Uh, so, so really, in my mother's family, they didn't mind if I wrote, but they didn't like what I was writing. Right. And to date, my mother still has never read any of my books. She won't, okay. she won't even have them in her house. Right. Uh, she told me in all seriousness that she loves me, but she doesn't want to invite the presence of Satan. So... Uh, wow. My first memories are of being terrified of just knowing that any day the world's going to end and everything's going to be awful. <laughs> and um, I thought God was love. I know, well, no, yeah, you wouldn't right. think it. Uh, but there, it's like kids who, who are bullied who become bullies. I, I was frightened all the time, and so now I like to scare people. <laughs> <laughs> and I write a lot of horror. That's how I got my start. And uh, I think the challenge is to say I'm not going to write against them. Yeah. You know, I want to write for me, but it would be right. very tempting to attack. Well, I mean, I, at least it, it I would is. be tempted it has to been. do that. It, it, has, it has been tempting at times, but it, it's the old kill your teachers, kill your mentors thing. It, yeah. it, you can't write against anybody. You can't write to anybody. Uh, you just have to tell the story that, that you, you know, feel compelled to tell. And that's right. how it worked out for me. So. so you're writing at the pace of about a book a year since you got published by Tor, give or take. Yeah. Do you get stuck? Do you get, I don't mean writer's block, but do you go through the, the throes of the middle? Or is it a pretty smooth sailing for you? Uh, well, I, mean, I know you got to pay the bills, but even pay then, the bills. Um, it, you know, some people do a lot of planning and outlining, and I'm more of the seat of your pants. Yeah. I, I usually know how it starts and how it ends, and sometimes I have to kind of muddle my way through the middle. And and 
very often I will find that I end up cutting 10 or 15,000 words out of the first half of something. It takes you a while to find where it's supposed to start, what it's supposed to look like to kind of right. grow into the story. Like this one I think I took out, oh, easily 15, 20,000 words of, of the first draft before I ever gave it to my editor. They, they just didn't need to be there. But, but they had to be written in order for me to find the place that I needed to start. If you can, I'd like you to finish this sentence for me. Okay. If writing has taught me anything, it has taught me what? That people don't change. People don't. People Over don't history. change. Over history. People are the exact same everywhere, every when. People don't change. Everybody's human and, and, and uh, write everybody as a human. And I, I don't know, that seems like a strange thing to no. say. When, when people, for example, when I did um, a novella that's a side project from this, I have a character who is based on a historic figure named uh, Maria Boyd. She was a Confederate spy. And I get a lot of feedback from people saying, you know, you really wrote this very modern woman, I think, in this 19th century role, and it doesn't feel true. Her real life was so much weirder and crazier than the one I wrote for her in the book. I toned it down. Uh, people are people, and people don't change. And, and regardless of what you see in the history books, um, None, none of us are a 21st century invention, no matter your, your, your ethnicity, your religion, your orientation, whatever group you identify with, we've always been here, uh, somewhere in, in the cracks. And I, I think that's part of the appeal and joy of steampunk, because you get to reclaim some of that. You know, we, we were left out, but you know what, we were there, and, and that's worth talking about. And, and maybe more importantly, it's worth playing with.